Hey boys and girls, welcome back to Mario and Rabbit's Sparks of Hope. In the last episode, we completed our journey inside the world of Pallet Prime, bringing the Dryad as well as the Lumberjack Sweet Low Peck, bringing them a little bit closer than ever before, both uh, deciding to put their differences aside for the betterment of Spellbound Woods, keeping the balance of life and death in check, also having enough wood and supplies for the rabbits in the village. Overall, a great send-off before our flight over to our next world of Terraflorum. Since, let's be honest here, now that we're officially done with Pallet Prime, other than obviously the mini-boss, which we can obviously not deal with until we actually go to Terraflorum, but for the most part, we are pretty much done. And that is pretty much what we always say about those mini-bosses anyways, to be honest, since we always have to come back to it. But with that being said, honestly... It's about time we get back into Terra Flora, since, let's be honest here, we have yet to go over there yet, and honestly, I'm quite intrigued, to be completely fair. So here we go, good old Terra Flora, here we come. And honestly, who even knows what's going to happen in the next world? Because the thing is, is we don't really know what's going on with the Spark Hunters. We have an idea of what the f what the final one could possibly be, since it's obviously a plant-based creature with vines of some sorts, since we saw Bedrock get saved by them. The only thing is, is we only saw the vines, we didn't see anything to do with the actual Spark Hunter. But the thing is, is with two more worlds, and what seems to be Curse's compound at the end, when will we actually face off against the next Spark Hunter? Because the thing is, is we could face off with them in this world, or, if we don't, what are we going to face off against? Because the thing is, is in the first world, we didn't have one. So, it's definitely kind of like up to speculation on what's going to end up happening. But, here we go. Good old Terra Flora, here we come. We're approaching Terra Flora, home to naturally sparkling mineral water springs, perennial flower prairies, not to mention the ever-blossom tree. Ever blossom tree. That sounds pretty cool. Mm, surely, Genie, even you can't spoil my enthusiasm for visiting the Garden of the Galaxy. Um, unfortunately, I believe I can. Curse's stronghold is now in range of our ship's instruments. So we're definitely getting close. So that confirms that then. So that big planet that we saw on the top right of the map is actually Curse's compound 100%. Because I didn't know if the map actually went any further to the right or not. So that does confirm that. So there is still one more world in our adventure, and then Curse's Compound, which is kind of terrifying, because the thing is, is, you know, we're getting closer and closer. But let's continue. Um, Curse has constructed a barrier of darkness energy around it that will prevent us from landing our spaceship there. Um, even if we do find enough purified darkness energy to reach it. Well, that's not good. Hmm, Edge, you must know a way. Why would Edge know? Um, how do you figure? Hmm, you knew Bedrock, and you also knew Midnight. There is something you're all choosing not to tell us, isn't there? Probably, but it isn't really our business to know, to be fair. But I have a feeling we will find out at some point. But the thing is, is I what I think, personally, is it's kind of... A simple idea. The thing is, is Augie mistaken Ed had mistaken Edge for a Spark Hunter when we first met Edge. The thing is, is maybe Edge was a Spark Hunter. Because the thing is, is if Bedrock knows her and Midnight knows her, obviously they have connections. And it seems like, well, obviously Midnight and Bedrock were created by Cursa. Because that's basically what the memories are telling us about these about the enemies we fight. So the thing is, is Cursor could have made the edge as well. The only thing is, is we don't have any proof on that. And the thing is, is for well, Bedrock and for Midnight. Well, let's be honest here. Midnight and Bedrock are evil, while Edge is good. So it's definitely kind of like a more of like kind of. A speculation of if they are or not. And the thing is, is Edge, well, from what we've seen, has been nothing but good. 
and isn't as completely, like, corrupted in design as Midnight in Bedrock is, or even the third Spark Hunter that we had a small look at. So, it's definitely kind of curious. But, yeah, it, maybe she wasn't a Spark Hunter either. Who even knows? But, that's kind of what I'm feeling like. I could be wrong. I guess we'll find out, though. Um, even if there was, it'd be my business. And trust me, you all don't want my business to be your business, understand? Eh, fair enough. <laughs> we'll find out soon enough if it is true. I, I could be right, but I also feel like that could be wrong at the same time. Because they could have met somewhere beforehand. And maybe I'm wrong about Mid uh, Bedrock and Midnight being made by Cursa. I'm only saying that because of the fact that, well, the other enemies. And I, <laughs> the thing is, is maybe with the fact that Spawny is somewhere, because we did hear about him at the very beginning. Well, maybe Spawny accidentally made all the Spark Hunters on accident. Because the thing is, is Cursa can make creatures just like Spawny can. So, who knows? It really is kind of kind of a confusing situation when it comes to that, because, well, at first it was only Spawny slash Goggles from Kingdom Battle that was able to make rabid-fied creatures and stuff like that. So, I'm very curious on what's going to end up be the end point there. Hmm, about those flower prairies, it looks like we're going to see them in person. Uh... Prepare for landing. Okay, here we are, Terra Flora. And, uh, well, now we know what the final Spark Hunter looks like, so... Yep, those were indeed vines. Although that now reminds me of the Parapid plant from the original game. But much more, obviously, much more, like, mixed up than it was in the original game for Kingdom Battle. Like, Kingdom Battle was just a rabbit and a pra and a rab or, like, prana plant mixed together. But this one definitely seems like much more mutated, where they're actually more equally mutated into each other, like the pr unlike the private plant was. So that's interesting. But uh, <laughs> definitely doesn't look like Midnight and Bedrock are on Cursa's good sides, that's for sure. 
Although I was kind of curious about the hesitation of Cursa when it was to crushing those sparks into what seems to be some kind of energy source for the star on her, like, stomach area. I definitely am very curious about that one. But here we are, Terraflora, and I guess we'll find out very soon what's going on with that. But honestly, let's begin for our next world. Um, Terraflora's foliage is suffering. Yeah, it's not looking too good. It definitely doesn't look like an ever blossom, like you were saying. Um, looks like it to me, and I get bouquets from here all the time. Um, really? Okay. Well, good for you, <laughs> good for you, Rabbit Peach. Um, a drought is looming. Terraflora's famous water volcano, Mount Spouts, um, has gone dormant. A water volcano, you say? Um, are you our warden? I honestly don't know at this point. <laughs> that voice, what palest beauty is that? That has vexed with soul consuming fire. Hmm, hidden e machine, all ships artificially intelligent pilot and systems manager, and I am. Um. Hmm, you mean to say you have bound this poor creature to this flying infrontery by the what wanton injustice? Um, she can kind of move anywhere she wants, obviously. She's not inside the ship, is she? Um, actually, while enjoyment of my duties is imm immaterial, I find them quite pleasurable, mister. Forgive my manners, sweet Chidi. I am Sullivan, chief en engineer of the Wiggler Express Railway. Wiggler Express Railway, railway you say? <laughs> and for some reason that was a tongue twister, but okay then, interesting. Hmm, I would love nothing more than to prove to you the superior oddity of steam power, were it not for a trifling problem on the rails. Oh, yeah, that's definitely a trifling problem. Huh. So we got a big dark mess, uh, tentacle problem on the railway. So we'll definitely be getting to see this, uh, Wiggler Express Railway very soon, then. Hmm, having the dining car run out of cucumber canops is a trifling problem. That is a dark mess tentacle. Hmm, with the vine bridges leading to my train not withered from drought, I'd steamroll the beast and reach Mouth Spout in a flash. Okay, well good to know, Mr. Sullivan. But you definitely don't seem to be the Warden. So that's interesting. So another world where we didn't immediately meet the Warden. Because I don't feel like he's going to be the Warden. Although it's very interesting to have another, like, major rabid show up, which is interesting. However, if there is hope to be found amidst the bleak, it shall be found at the Everbloom Tree. Um, thank you, Mr. Sullivan. We will visit the Everbloom Tree right away and see your train soon, I promise. Yeah, we'll definitely check, check out your train. Also, I see one of the secret uh, planet coin missions already. <laughs> right over there. Hmm, curse the tentacle for its importunity. Importunity. Mm, the vine bridge is keeping me from my train, all as dried as maiden's tears. This is the Everbloom Tree. Resolution starts there. Okay, resolution indeed starts over there. Maybe this start world doesn't have a warden, because he would have said he was the warden if we, you know, me we met him, so he, he would have said it. But, uh, looks like we got a little bit of a rabid little uh, thing over here. Hmm. I like Terraflora's chances of the planet-shaped cheese bowl cup. They sign some good crumble wh whackers in the off season. <laughs> okay then. Well, um, I guess we just make our way over there then. Since it definitely seems like we're making our way to where the Everbloom tree should be, although it's definitely no longer in bloom anymore based off the fact that those, um, uh, yeah, those buds don't look very blooming, to be honest. But let's see what's going on with good old Salespot real quick, since he has a conversation for each world. Oh, you're not from the Galactic Robot Regulatory Commission, are you? Oh, there's a rumor going around that my prices are so low, I must be insane. You, you probably already are, before uh, even telling us that one, buddy. 
Oh, but just because I buy in volume, then pass the savings on to you at a great expense. Oh, to my personal well-being. There's no reason to question my operational capa cap capabilities. Oh, of course, it's not easy to get in inventory out here. Hence a small markup. Shop with, um, confidence. I'm not crazy. Yeah, sure. Definitely not. Ooh, what's this? Super mushroom chest. Okay, so we have a 70% HP heal now inside the, the shop. That's interesting. What other item? I, we did get one of these early. Also, we finally have a Boom Bella umbrella that actually matches the costume color of Princess Peach's actual, like, you know, normal, like, normal costume of what she wears her dress. That's actually interesting, because we've been getting, like, greens and stuff like that, and the steampunk one didn't fit her, but we finally got one that actually works. Huh. Cool. So now we have the normal skin for Peach, as well as that one. And also a vintage Bowzooka as well. Although, I still like the Megabug one for Bowser, just because, let's be honest here, the Megabug for Bowser is just fitting because of everything that happened with the final boss of the original Kingdom Battle adventure, not the DK's adventure, obviously. Because technically the final battle would be Rabid Donkey Kong, but, uh, or Rabid Kong specifically. But, in a way, well, in the original game, it officially is the Mega Pug Dragon Bowser boss fight, so definitely interesting. Also, there's a new enemy called a Magna Fowl. Okay, so we'll definitely look for that. But here we are, our very next world. It looks like the Goombas with their pots on their heads are now officially, like, normal enemies. Which is definitely something we need to be careful about. So we got the t secret zone over by the Everbloom. And I'm just curious about what's over here. Something called an Oozer, so another new enemy. The Swallowing Sound, as well as in full gloom. Okay, so not a lot of, like ones right away, but oh, we also have one of these, the Sluggish and the Puckish. Huh, that's interesting. Usually we don't get these opening up until after our world's done, but in Palette Prime they also had one early as well. So I'm guessing this is more than likely a skin for Rabid Rosalina by the fact that Rosalina's in the front, and we already had one for Luigi. But interesting. Okay, well I think we'll continue going towards Stay on Track, I think. And then if we run into anything, we'll do it. I am curious about this, um, one enemy, the Oozer. I'm wondering if we'll find one inside this Goomba mission over here, just because I'm curious. And also, it's been- it's the first time we've actually seen the Goombas in their own, like, world outside of, like, any, like, normal fight, to be completely fair. I just wanted to see if there was anything hiding in here. So we don't need to actually set up this time, which is actually interesting. Usually, we normally have to set up for, like, missions like this. But the thing is, is because all these enemies actually only have one HP, we just have to dash into them and do it right, to be completely fair. Um, only thing is, is how do we do it, and how do we want to do it? There's definitely options on how to do it. But I'm gonna say, probably the best thing is making sure we're in range of, obviously, multiple Goombas, to be completely fair. But for the most part, it's pretty simple on how to deal with enemies like this. Just because all you really need to do is just toss him out of the map. But, um, thing is, is Bowser and Rosalina can only dash once. So our dashes are going to be kind of limited, or limiting at times. But the thing is, is for the most part, well, we can easily get rid of a good, decent chunk of them. And then we just have to stay out of their range for the most part when it comes to the rest of it. Although I can't really get to the rest of that enemy for over there. So I guess just staying invisible in this zone over here would probably be good. Just because invisibility definitely has its perks at times. And then probably just stay... Actually, I could maybe put these guys to sleep, though. That's definitely an option. <laughs> but yeah, just taking a good look at the missions here would be kind of curious. Just because the thing is, is with these Goomba missions, you never know. Just because, well, we haven't really seen any of these outside of, like, regular missions, so it's definitely worth a check for sure. But I think we definitely have it right here. Just gotta grab this goob over here. We already had enough movement to get to this guy over here. And that is a nice little roaming goomba done for the counts. 
your little pots on your heads don't keep you that safe, buddies. The more dashes I have, the faster I can deal with you guys. <laughs> uh, but down they go. Not bad. 55 coins and 60 star bits for taking out a roaming enemy is not too bad. Also, sometimes you get w items from them, too. So, we could have got something pretty good from that. There's another secret zone one. So, we've seen two of them already. Although, no way of getting to them yet, for sure. But, still something, just in case, because you never honestly know. Looks like there is a dark mess puddle over there. This seems like it's a hidden bridge, but it isn't. Interesting. Although there is a sound-based thing over there that I see. I can barely see it, but it's very far out of range. So we're definitely not going that way yet. So there's only one way to go. <laughs> to the dark mess puddle. Foul attraction. Well, let's get on into it then. Foul attraction, here we come. <laughs> only thing is, is... We're going to find the oozer enemy in here. Because I'm very curious on what this oozer enemy is. Because if it says that, you know, that's definitely a new enemy. Also, that's a new enemy, too. So that must be... Actually, no, it might not be, actually. I was going to say it might be what we saw in that book. But let's double check. It seems like it's a wild claw of some sort. Oh no, this is indeed the Magnifal. Okay, then. So this is that book, that enemy that has the lore book inside the shop. So he's weak to ooze. So let's see here. Target's closest rival to unleash area attacks that deal massive damage. If its closest opponent isn't within range, it will use a technique to draw them in closer. The Clucker Clobbler. Okay, then. That's uh, not terrifying at all. And then Attract. We definitely need to stay out of this. Because that's a... Yeah, that's a lot of damage. So, yeah, we need to be very careful. And they walk pretty decently far. It's as big as their movement, so... That's... Yeah, that's definitely not good. Or actually, no, it's a little bit bigger than their movement by, like, one or two. But still, though, we definitely need to be far away from those enemies. But it looks like there's water barrels on the floor. Are we able to pick those up? Because that definitely looks like that. Okay, then. Well, I guess we'll find out here. Well, it looks like I can't pick it up, but I'm guessing I can hit it. Okay, so we can do extra damage with those barrels. Um, other than that, other than the Magnafowl, is there anything else on this map we should know about? Just in case. Okay, it looks like it's just Stooges and Magnafowls. Okay, we should easily be able to deal with this, I think. Only thing is, is uh, it is a whole new enemy, so we do need to be careful. So definitely set up our turbo charge. Ooh, I got a spark energy back. Thank you, Bowser. <laughs> didn't lose anything for doing that, which is very good to see. I'm going to definitely spawn a Wild Claw on top of you. I hope you like that, buddy, because uh, I'll be honest, there is no reason not to spawn one. Ooh. Probably not the smartest idea to do it like that, though, to be fair. I wasn't expecting him to break the barrel, to be completely fair. But, uh, you know what, it probably doesn't work out too bad. I could probably work with that, to be fair. Just, it wasn't exactly how I wanted it to go, though, I will be honest. But, it's, um, let's see here, how do we want to do this? Bowser could go up there right now. He is completely safe to go up there. So that's definitely worth an option. I'm going to say probably setting up Vamp Dash might be in the cards. Because I feel like maybe dealing with uh, the Magnifal on the other side over here by the jump panel might be a good idea. And we also get a free, um, like, leaving of this area, too, if we need to. So that's also pretty good by him being here like that. So we'll definitely take what we can get there. Okay, other than that, a couple options here. I see one is definitely using Rosalina to get rid of one enemy. But I could also get rid of this guy, which is probably worth it in the end, end result. You know what, that's actually pretty good, actually. Because what we could do is obviously knock him out by himself. And then obviously take the jump panel to the upper area here. And then start working on the enemies over here. Only thing is, is the Magnafowl that was... Well, he's still out of range, I guess. So we should be perfectly fine with that. Only thing is, is... Do we go invisible first and then hope for a spark energy refresh? That's kind of what I'm thinking. 
Because the thing is, is the Magnafowl might be in range of me. We got a Spark Refresher, so we got our Ethereal back instantly. So we already know somebody's going to be completely safe for a while, which is good to see. But I think what Bowser wants to do is maybe jump on top of this guy for a little bit of damage. Not bad. We did bounce him down there. Although he did survive. Hmm. Okay, then. Definitely wasn't ready for that one, to be fair. But maybe we can still work with that. I can definitely start sending out these guys. Because the thing is, is, Rosalina could easily deal with the Magnafowl that's still down there. I ended up decreasing the level of our Mecha Koopas, though. Reason was, is so we can make sure that we have a Spark ready in sets. Because the thing is, is I wanted to be able to have that refresher. And, well, the only way to do it is, well, what I did. So, definitely works out in the end. But we'll definitely knock you out, I think. I feel pretty safe with that thing not next to me, the way that it is. And I think probably backing up Bowser just a slight bit might be safe, just because of the range that we're at the current moment. But the thing is, is do we get a crit? We might, although I don't think we're 100% going to get one. But it does look like the best option here is to blast at the Stooge with Bowser here. Which actually almost got him, to be fair. Not bad, actually. And then other than that, uh, probably could get a little closer to him, I think. Or do we want to go anywhere else? We could go a little closer to the Magnafowl and maybe cut off his movement. Because I think as long as we're in the middle here, I don't think he's actually going to get to keep his full movement. Because I think... He, I think he might not be able to squeeze through me, because I can't squeeze through big enemies, so I don't think they'll be able to squeeze through Edge. So, it might end up working pretty well, actually, with that current movement there. I don't mind that at all. I really I really do like it. And then we have two Magnafowls over there, next to each other. So, that's not too bad. And what we can do is, obviously, we can send Edge over there with Ethereal, and start doing some dashes, and... Maybe just get exactly what we want out of that. Although down goes our little wild claw that we summoned. <laughs> Poor guy didn't get a chance. Didn't get a chance, but he did do pretty good on his own. But now that we have that down for the counts, we can now make our way over here. So I think that's definitely in the cards. So let's see here. It's definitely dashing into you a couple times is worth the effort for sure. We could throw in one of these too. Although, is that really worth it? We only do 300 damage normally. So, there is definitely some options. I'm going to say extra dashes could be pretty good here. So I say we should probably go for that first. Because then we get extra, like, bounces into these enemies. And if I can get rid of one of them, I'll feel pretty good about it. But we're doing 500 damage per dash now. So, I think definitely at least getting one of these guys... Pretty much, well, he's definitely down now. That's not bad at all. Uh, are we going to be still invisible by the end of this round? That's more of what I'm worried about now, at this point. I think we still will be. So I think maybe going for something like this could be pretty good. So Flying Blade for you. Blow you up with the good old Splash as well. 730 damage is not bad. Although you are basically on top of me now, and I'm not really sure how I feel about that. But I do see a free dash onto the Stooge over there. So, so far, pretty good movement. There is a freebie on hitting the Magnafowl over there. And he can't really make it to Bowser on his own. So, I think that's probably good for a blast, I think. <laughs> oh, we got a crit out of that with the splash. So, we pushed him a little bit further. So far, so good. Um, let's see... I see an option of going over to the Stooge over there. Although, is that really where we want to go? Let's see. We have a couple options here, for sure. Although, I'm curious if we're in range of putting this Stooge to sleep. Nope, just out of range. So no doing that. Although, that doesn't mean that we can't do it. Because what I could do is we could make our way over here, and obviously drop down right around here and then I could go through the pipe and then dash into the guy and put him to sleep as well so I think that's probably what we'll end up doing there just because there's no reason not to do it 
And also, it might end up being a saving grace at the same time, because you never honestly know with some of these enemies, depending on how you jump and leave certain areas. But I think as long as we ent exit here, yep, we can go straight to you. Although, do I feel better about putting that guy to sleep? Probably feel better about putting him to sleep, but I'm going to make sure that we definitely get rid of one of these stooges. So down you go, buddy. <laughs> and then I think we just um, wait and see what happens now. Because the Magnafowl should be just out of range of everything. Yep, he's completely out of range. That's perfect. Okay, so first things first is I'm going to do a vamp attack. I want to see how much damage this actually does. Because we've never actually got to use it yet. And then, well, it looks like it's definitely going to do 176 damage, but it's 100, it's 15 times, which is basically a thousand, well, more than 1,500 damage, which is pretty good, honestly. Bones Blast you in the next, next century with that lifesteal. And there we go. We got a little bit of our health back from that. That's not bad. Um, honestly, we could, technically, I'm wondering, if I jump on top of this barrel, does it blow it up? It does indeed blow it up. Hmm. Okay. Well, you learned something new. Interesting. Although I don't think that's probably a worth it idea. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> but, uh, hmm. Definitely something we could try if we do need to do it. But, probably not going to try that again, to be fair. Because that was 730 damage for getting hit by that barrel. But still interesting, nonetheless. There's normally a vine bridge here. That the warden surely knows how to make it sprout. Well, there's a sound-based thing here. Although, that didn't open it up at all. Also, wait a minute. Is that the one? Yeah, that's the one on the tracks. Okay, I thought that was a different one for a second. Because there should be two anyways, because every world has had two of them. And it looks like... Not really seeing any other where Dark Mess Tentacles could possibly be at the current moment. Just because... Nothing's really screaming... Dark Mess Tentacle going crazy around here, but Beepo's wave power needs to be upgraded to access this. Okay, well that answers that question. <laughs> That's why we couldn't use that sound base panel, we need an upgraded variant of it. Anything else around here before we go anywhere else? Because it looks like we're definitely heading inside at the current moments. But I do kind of want to see what this user enemy is, but I don't think we can make it anywhere near it. Although we do have this over here, Swallowing Sound, we could definitely try that. But let's see here, I'm just curious if we can make it to that area that we were looking at earlier. Because, yeah, that actually does look like it's out of range. Because it looks like it's one of those areas that we need to open up one of those vine, like, walled areas from the sound base thing. Okay, well at least we checked. Because I was curious about it. Well, we can definitely do this mission at least. Swallowing sound. Just because, well, I want to do at least one side quest while we're here. <laughs> Might as well. But swallowing sound is a bunch of uh, Goombas with pots on their heads. As well as some depleters. Although these depleters are actually red. Unlike the blue ones that we were seeing in the other area. That's interesting. Anything new about them that we should know about? Doesn't really look like it. Okay then. Well, interesting. Well, so far, definitely doesn't seem too hard. I could definitely say that one. Although, we definitely have to waste our dashes on Goombas here. If we want this to work out perfectly. But I do say we could still go for Turbo Charge. Just because I feel like I could probably do something along the lines of... Actually, how much HP does these Depleters have again? Because I'm pretty sure they have a decent amount. Yeah, 200... 2,200, so there's definitely, we can't just do a wild claw and do that. We could technically still go through this pipe over here and do a little bit of stuff too, although it's mostly for Goombas, <laughs> but of course he's just out of range even though this shouldn't be in range at all. <laughs> um, I do say definitely get one of these Goombas out of here for sure, so toss you on out buddy. I might go for... Um, one of the cookies, maybe. That would definitely probably be worth it, for sure. But I'm definitely going to say Vamp Dash. If we do get a Spark, we did get a Spark Energy back. So I'm probably definitely going to take one of the multi-dashes and then. 
Because we could definitely use that to our advantage. But I say definitely get you out of here. And then maybe what we can do is we could take one of these Goombas with us and throw him on out. I think the other allies can maybe get to the... It looks like, yeah, we can get to both of those by ourselves. Perfect. I just want to make sure there's not, like, too many Goombas on top of us here. Because if we do this wrong, it will definitely not be the best thing for us. And then I think we could probably go unseen here. We might get another Spark Energy back. But we did get the Refresher instead. So not bad. We could definitely work with that. And we definitely got a bunch of these Goombas out instantly too. Which is perfect because of how these missions work. Since one, we obviously have to defeat all enemies. So getting rid of them early is the best case scenario. And then honestly, for the most part, I do say we should probably spawn in the Wild Claw here. Although I need to get a perfect angle for it, just because I want to make sure it goes for the Depleter and not the Goomba. Because it probably will attack the Goomba if I don't do it right, to be fair. But there we go, perfect. Okay. Other than that, I uh, probably could put these guys to sleep now. Just because now we know that these Goombas will stay up here. And that's probably the best case scenario there. Um, but other than that, probably can end our turn like that. And Bowser probably needs a little bit of help real quick. Just Let's just make sure he can make his way up there. Because he's probably going to need it. Because I think what we can do on the turn afterwards, I'm going to just do it like this. I just want to make sure we get inside the pipe. I don't want to accidentally wake up the enemies. Because as soon as we wake them up, it's not going to be good for us. But as long as we can make it to like an area like here, I feel pretty good about it. And then Bowser, probably going to Bowzooka here, I think, for you, buddy. We could do something like that, but I feel like the fact that the Balazooka actually does less damage if you're not directly in the middle of the circle is probably a better just to go for something along the lines of that. <laughs> but definitely not a bad turn for sure. And we could probably two-turn this if we do it right, just based off the... And uh, that's probably not smart of you to actually attack that guy. But I do think he's probably, yeah, he's definitely going down. <laughs> I was thinking he was going to survive, but nope, he did not survive at all. Okay, so now it's just about getting rid of enemies now. I'm going to say definitely dashing you once is probably a good idea. I think my main idea here is probably starting to get some damage into these guys in the back. Because the thing is, is these guys are going to hit me back if I hit them. So being about in a good range of them is probably a good idea for the most part and doing multiple dashes into them will give us a little bit extra damage on them before they do decide to go crazy because they'll definitely start going crazy if we let them but i do see we could definitely get a knock into you uh we can't go for both of you in one hits but the other guy is going to go down for sure so not bad at all I could definitely send in the Rabid Mecha Koopas here, so let's send those in, because those will definitely have some fun over here with these Depleters, to be fair. And they shouldn't go for the Goombas, I would hope. They might. It looks like they're wasting on the Goomba now. But it could have been worse. It definitely could have been worse. And as long as we got the Depleter out, I'm actually pretty fair with that, to be fair. <laughs> so I don't mind it. So it toss you on out of here, buddy. And, uh, Rosalina, we're gonna need you for the other one. Because <laughs> we only have one dash on Bowser and Rosalina. A little unfortunate on that part, but for the most part, should pretty much have this, I think. I think all we really need to do now is honestly, I could probably, along the lines of, well, that doesn't get rid of you, actually. Hmm. Well, I was kind of hoping that would get rid of you, but it doesn't. So I think the best case scenario here is dropping on top of him and then going from there, I think. Because I want to make sure that he does go down. Because I feel like Rosalina could probably make sure the other guy goes down before he can before he can go for any kind of counterattack. Because the thing is, is he's only going to attack if he survives. So if he survives, he survives. But as long as we do knock him out, because all we really need to do is just obviously edge to do a little bit of damage if we need it and that definitely gets it down but i do want to make sure for sure so definitely gonna throw a flying blade just in case 
and then I think we're definitely good here. But not bad. Pretty easy little side quest. No reason not to, you know, finish it off if we could get it done like so. <laughs> and also gets one out of our way too. And we also get a planet coin for it, so pretty good. <laughs> 190 star bits though. I'll take that, because any kind of leveling for any st sparks that we might want to throw on later might be good. Because the thing is, is I'm kind of saving star bits for sparks I feel like we're we're going to want to use later on. And it looks like... Hey, the tarot... Or no, these aren't the tarot cards. They remind me of the tarot cards from the... Uh, the good old uh, swamp level from uh, Kingdom Battle. But nope, those are definitely records. But the pictures on the actual things actually do remind me of it. Actually, wait a minute, isn't it? Yeah, that is Tom Fallon. So I was right on that. That's cool. Or what would be Fan Tom, but he, his name is technically Tom Fawn, but definitely cool. Huh, so let's see what's going on here. Mm, it's the Fawn Toms. Gold gramophone, a world for the best opera album. A thousand hours of Mario fear falling into lava. <laughs> uh, he definitely does not like Mario, which we could understand from his song in the original game, but still, though, jeez, he really does not like Mario. And it looks like we're definitely needing to go inside the Everbloom tree, because there's no way to go anywhere else in the, the area right now. But here it is. I thought that was a cutscene for a second, based on it doing that. But let's see what's going on here. Who are you? Uh, good question. Hmm. It must be the spirit of the Everbloom tree itself. Um, what do you want? Hmm. We mean you no harm, in fact. We can help restore your majestic Everbloom to its natural efflorescencing state. I have no clue who that was talking to us. Um, hack. Enter and make your, your way to the upper branches. I will see you soon, should you be worthy. Okay, is that the warden? They don't seem very friendly. Because it might be the warden or it could be a rabid. I'm not really sure. That's why I'm going with the normal voice for that, to be honest. Tell him for sure, I would have probably go with the normal voice for now. Mm, yes, of course. Oh, great spirit of the Everbloom. Thank you. You won't regret it. Um, wipe your feet before you come in. Um, okay. <laughs> I thought it was this this rabbit talking to us uh, at first, but nope, it's definitely something on in the inside. It was, what I meant is like, I thought right when we first got to the tree, when it, something was talking to us, I thought it was this guy, but nope. Curses, dark mess, made mouth, smell, run dry. We can't work if our flowers won't bloom. I wonder, where's this, uh, mount spelt? Well, there's definitely a lot of dark mess over there. Maybe that's where the second tentacle is. Because that definitely looks like a mountain of some sort. And that could be their volcano. Although, is it their volcano? Eh, could be. Definitely could be. So that would definitely be where the other dark mess tentacle is. If we, you know, find out. And also, here's the secret zone. We saw it on the map. Might as well take a look at it. <laughs> but... Let's make our way on inside the Everbloom, since it's our only option of current places to go at the current moment. Because we don't have a way of traversing anywhere else inside this world. So, well, let's be honest here. This is definitely the only place we can go. Also, Peepo's have a nice fun time over there in the side of the map. But here it is, the Everbloom tree. And it looks like we got some murals for the warden here. So it looks like we're definitely going to at least get a nice little intro to them. Because, well, every single warden has had the little murals. So let's see what's going on here. They look like a honeybee. Huh. So the warden's definitely a queen bee. That's for sure. Huh. Well, I guess it's fitting for, sp for a spring-based world. Because this is 100% definitely a spring-based world based on the previous worlds all being based off the seasons. But definitely interesting based on... All the other, like, wardens seem to be somewhat normal. Obviously, Augie was, you know, kind of based, uh, I guess you could say he was mixed with, like, 
a sea god or some of some sort, and Captain Orion was obviously could have been mixed with like obviously a captain of the ocean, and then obviously for good old Woodrow, obviously could have been mixed with a poet. But the thing is, is we've never seen a warden completely like mixed up, unlike the previous ones. That's kind of weird, huh? Wonder why it's just this one. B's first solo album was corporate produced in pop drivel. I mean, really, who listens to that rubbish? A decent amount of people. <laughs> I'm not one, but there's a lot of people that li listen to that kind of music, so I can't really say anything about that, buddy. Um, your playlist has six different live versions of the album, including a remastered one that was released last week, Beepo. <laughs> Got called out there, Beepo. <laughs> you can't be saying stuff like that if you're one of the people that listens to it. Uh, that's not really fair there, bud. Also, there's something in this. Hello. What are... Oh, hello. So we need to grab the little... The blue circle over there and put that in there. Okay, cool. <laughs> I was wondering what that sparkle was over there. But, uh... Um, looks like we also need a square of some sort, too. Also, looks like we got another one of these sound-based puzzles. So it wants us to go right, but I wanted to check what's... Oh, okay, well, there's something over here. A bunch of uh, free invisible coins. Cool. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. It says to go this way. It's probably yep, a ladder. Okay, cool. We'll definitely take the ladder. <laughs> Looks like we also got another mural over here about B. Warden B of Terraflora. Well, nice to meet you. B fired her manager and made an experimental album done entirely underwater. That's kind of cool. Critics dare to call it an artistic temper tantrum appealing only to those pseudo-intellectual snobs. Honestly, I loved it. <laughs> so you're definitely one of her fans, based on what we can tell. So, uh... I guess we're waiting for a Beepo uh, fan freak out here in a second, I guess. Also, it looks like another sound-based one. It says to go right. Although I don't see... Well, bridge could probably be what it's talking about. Anything else we should know about? Um, not really, but there is a music box with a rabbit on top of it. And it looks like... Hello, what are you? Oh, our little square block. Cool. We'll be taking that. <laughs> and taking that with us all the way to, obviously, over here. And this should take us right to our circle as well. So two blocks for two different areas. <laughs> we'll definitely take it. But so far, puzzle doesn't seem too hard here. Because some of the puzzles in Kingdom Battle could be pretty tough. Just based on uh, the Donkey Kong Adventure one. Jeez. The last one that was in that was quite hard, I'm going to be honest. Because uh, there was some, some like areas where... You had to, like, really sit down and look at the puzzle and what you were really, really looking at to, and, like, kind of, like, figure out what was really going on with it. Also, these gates sometimes, well, let that degenerate real quick. It's still going. Okay, then. Still going? Nope. Okay. I don't know why, but that, the, the frames just drop as soon as I look at one of those things, and that's not something to do with, uh, recording or anything. That's just the system itself is just, like, Please, no, don't do it. <laughs> sometimes they go away right away, though. I don't understand it sometimes. But let's see here. Hmm. B is a survivor with her singing career over. She retired to Terraflora and began a new life as an organic farmer. Hmm. Thankfully, we have lots of great albums to remember B's voice. But, a beautiful voice, but just not this one. Her, here she sounds like a rusty chainsaw. Rusty chainsaw? Huh. <laughs> okay then. Well, that's definitely not a good thing. But if that's only her one bad, bad album, that's not too bad, I guess. <laughs> What's going on with you? The symbol, it's important somehow. I know it. Okay, well, we can scan that one. I don't know why we could scan that one, but not the other ones. That's kind of odd. wonder why that is. I wonder if it's... Oh, hey, Professor Backpack's back here. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Long time no see. The planet has its secrets. 
Where have you been? I am at a loss over Terraflor as greatest risen. This cursed nonsense has clearly rerouted your priorities. Speaking of rerouting, pay attention. Okay, pay attention. What are we doing? Oh, I see. Okay, well, this isn't a riddle. This is actually just a straight-up puzzle. Okay, then. Interesting. Well, I see one that opens up some kind of rail over on the back area, but I don't see a second block, though. So I'm guessing one's invisible. Probably where the opening where that sound-based area is, by a guess. Or could be where the triangle is e as well. Hmm, <laughs> okay. Is it a child's toy or a triumph of the past? With a huff and a puff, it stalled with a great gasp. Can you solve the riddle to bring the Wiggle Express Railway full circle? Full steam ahead, I say. Okay. It stalled with a gasp, eh? Okay. Well, let's definitely take a look around. Oh, there it is. Well, apparently it wasn't up there. Although, actually, I thought this was higher up, to be fair. But nope. Okay, then. So it's definitely move this up here. So let's definitely throw that there. Let's probably make a pathway over here real quick while we're here. And then obviously see if we can... Well, we can't go up with it. So we just got to send it up then. And then make our way over. Okay, so far looks pretty simple. The only thing is, is we definitely need to swap the positions of blue and green here based on the fact that, obviously, the top right there is definitely a curve, and this one's a straight piece. So definitely, what we need to do is definitely make our way over there. So we need to hit this on square, it looks like. So we need to pull this on over, and then lay it right on top of this, this little area over here to solve this part of the puzzle. So, so far, doesn't seem too hard. Okay, well, let's definitely scan that. Let's see here. And it looks like it is... Okay, for a second I was thinking it was... We needed the increased version, but it, it isn't, thankfully. I thought it was for a second. Okay, well, we definitely pulled this on over then. Because it doesn't... Oh, Bowser. <laughs> Bowser, you can't be standing there, buddy. Okay, I might need to pull pull Bowser off my team or something along those lines. Because he's wanting to... St <laughs> he was standing in front of my block there for a second. There we go. Okay. Now that that's on triangle, okay, what we need to do now is along the lines of pushing that, pulling this through. Okay, this doesn't seem hard at all. This is actually really simple. Okay, then. Huh. I thought this was going to be a harder puzzle, to be fair. But nope, this seems pretty simple for the most part. Because all we really need to do now is make our way downwards at any possible way. It's obviously going over here. But the thing is, is first we need to... Okay, I see it. So what we need to do over here is bring this over first. Because now we don't need to worry about the opening of the triangle for the time being. And for some reason, I can't push this over. Can you go over? Is it really Bowser that's making this a... Not... Okay, Bowser's sometimes walking in front of my puzzles. I might need to remember to swap him off when I do these puzzles now. Just based on that being the case. Let's swap this over here and push this onto this sound base block. And then all we need to do from here is obviously just swap it back to the way it was so we can obviously go back down. And then from there it's pretty simple because all we really need to do is obviously move this on over to about right there and then slide this little uh, green uh, piece all the way to the other side over to the triangle. And then from there, honestly, just put them in place. Because now we just need to make sure that we obviously do the right side first. Because we need to be able to move that green piece in a second. But there's one. And now, just to get piece number two. Not bad. Pretty simple puzzle, for the most part. Also a pretty cool puzzle, honestly. <laughs> just because um, the riddles have all been based off of, like... Well, let's be honest here. Pretty much, you're like you know, figuring out based off of everything else, but it's pretty interesting. Actually, wait a minute. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. There's another piece here. There's two pieces. Oh, wait a minute. 
I didn't realize there was four pieces. Okay, now that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, well... Based off of this... We need a straight piece. Which, that's definitely going to go over there. But all the other pieces are in place. For the most part. Okay, so our puzzle's not done yet. <laughs> oh. Okay, then. Well, that's, uh... That's not good. I didn't realize that there was going to be pieces in the middle of the area, though, to be fair. But we do need to pull these out, though, in order to move these. So, first things first is definitely putting trying or this onto the square again. Definitely a longer puzzle than I realized it was going to be, so it was a little bit harder than I realized, so that's good. Although, how do you get to that? Because, uh... Well, moving, I guess, the piece over... I guess that's all... Okay, so... We were almost done with that side, to be fair. So what we need to do... Is just undo what we did real quick. And pull everything out. And replace it. Because we need to pull those pieces out first. Before we do stuff like that. Which is a little unfortunate, just because... You know, we thought we already had it finished. But, um... Well, apparently it was out of range of that. There we go. Okay, so what we need to do is obviously move this back onto triangle. I might do a small cut till um, we have all the pieces out for the other set, because this is basically just pulling everything back into place. So I might do a small cut here. So be your b-boys and girls, I'm going to get this like situated to where we're dealing with this piece in this upper piece here, because all we're really doing is moving stuff in place to the where, well, let's be honest here, where we can actually mess with those pieces. So, beer be boys and girls. Okay, now that we actually have all the pieces back into position, also, it saved you guys a little bit of time since all those pieces were already pretty much already in place on the other side, so, well, save you guys some time by just putting those in place real quick for you guys since, let's be honest, we already had all three pieces for this side already over here. So, making sure that we were basically at the end of the puzzle again, since it saves you a little bit of time and also saves me a little bit of time to just sit back and just look at what's really going on on that side. But there we go. Let's grab our free little piece over here, and then we'll see what's going on with Professor Backpack, since, well, let's be honest here, we're going to be saying goodbye to him for another world here, and obviously we'll probably see him in the next two worlds too, I would think, because I'm... I would think he would be at Curse's compound. I don't see why he wouldn't be, since he followed us all the way here. But, uh, let's see what's going on. Mm, I couldn't be more proud. Another riddle laid bare, thanks to your wit and keen eye. Full detail. This must be where generations of punctilious uh, trained engineers hone their craft and incubated their passions. Think of the knowledge shared. The stories told, the passionate debates, ooh, to be a fly on the wall. Uh, okay. <laughs> a fly on the wall, indeed. Ooh, I'll bet they gave each other cool nicknames, too, like Boxcar Beepo or Rumbling Robin Luigi. Ha, huh. good names. Well, kind of right there. It would be more like Raving Rabbids, but sure. <laughs> Pretty close there, buddy. A rambling rabbit. <laughs> well, it's definitely, um, definitely not a bad name. <laughs> That's for sure. But just like that, done with another one of those missions, though. So I think that's probably where we're going to be ending off today's episode. Just because, well, actually, maybe I could do one of these, Corpse Deep Battle. Although that's level 25, though. So I'm pretty sure that's probably, uh, one of those other types of missions. Dream Coin Challenge back here. How do you get to that? I didn't see any way of getting to that one. It's above me somewhere. Huh. Okay. Well, there's uh, one of those uh, spell raiser enemies. There is a way over here, but the thing is, is we've already went that way. I don't think, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're definitely not going back that way. But interesting, though. So, yeah, we definitely can't get into the other little secret missions yet. Or, I shouldn't say secret missions, but we obviously can't get to any of the... Actually, no, we might be able to get to one, actually. There's one over here, apparently. 
So you know what? We'll probably do this one real quick. Just because, you know what? I think we can have a little bit extra time to do one of our other side quests. Since the more side quests we do now, you know, the less we have to do later when we have to do our cleanup episodes for each world. So, honestly, probably a good thing to do it now, honestly. Since we're about to end off today's episode anyways. So, probably would be a good send-off. But let's see here. It looks like... Okay, well, it looks like those spell rays are enemies, but they look different, though. Those... Well, it could be that oozer enemy type we heard about. That could probably be what that is. Let's see. Is it a... It is indeed a different enemy. Okay, so I thought it was a spell raiser, but it's not. So let's see here. The oozer. Attacks are ooze-based. Has mastery over two techniques. One prevents targets from attacking. The other one prevents targets from using their own techniques. And their spark powers. Okay, so this is like being frozen or inked in the previous games. Okay, interesting. And obviously we got the Sea Stooges back, which will bounce us in the air if we get hit by them. Other than that, just depleters. Okay, so pretty much just the Oozer enemy is pretty much new here, for the most part at the current moment. But so far it doesn't seem too hard to get to all of them. Just because um, they're all pretty close in range of each other, from what we could see. Although we're... Actually, nope, we're still in range of doing a dash. I'm surprised it still counts, but it lets us. I'll take it. I'll definitely take it. But let's definitely dash into you. I'm going to say definitely dash into the oozers. We do not need them doing any kind of wacky shenanigans. Let's be fair there, because they will... Definitely seems like they definitely will do some shenanigans if we let them. I'm going to say... Probably dash into both of you, actually. I didn't even see the option to dash into both of them on edge. But I probably should have did that, honestly. But I'm going to say definitely spawn in some rabid mecha koopas on these guys. Because let's be honest here, blowing them sky high is probably a good good idea right here and now. Because making sure they're down early, probably a good thing. We can crush them here if we need to. Or we can maybe make our way over here. And maybe spawn in a Wild Claw, and I say that's probably a good idea. So let's probably send in one of those, because let's be honest here. Looks like he is, yep, gonna be able to completely smash in that other guy. Jeez. Okay then. Um, is there any other enemies that we need to worry about? Because it seems like... Actually, it seems like some are actually gonna spawn in, actually. Because the thing is, is not all enemies are on the map. Huh. Okay then. Interesting. Very, very interesting. I'm going to say probably putting those guys to sleep would be a good idea. I might have Edge help out Bowser, though, for the time being. Because I feel like jumping on these guys is probably a good idea. Just because, well, let's be honest. Okay, well, that did not work. Why did that not work? That's the worst thing to possibly happen right there. Okay, then. Um, huh. Well, maybe I can hit all of them here. Maybe. Yeah, I can. Okay, perfect. Okay, so it's not too bad. I thought it was really, really bad for a second there. Oof. I was a little worried there, because what I was wanting to do almost messed up completely. Because Bowser needed to drop on top of them, yes. But the thing is, is thankfully, because Bowser is 100% messed his uh, jump up there somehow, I don't know what happened. But the thing is, is I need them to be asleep. And that's, that's a good thing. Okay, so... Now that we know for sure that we can get these guys for sure, and now I don't have to worry about Bowser's jump messing up there, I think we definitely just get in range, I think. It should have went off anyways, I think, to be fair. Because I didn't. it's not like I dropped like on top of something like it normally, the reason why those mess up. But for some reason, it just completely messed up, and I have no idea what exactly happened there. But let's put both of these guys to sleep, since we have a free option of that. Since no reason not to, right? And I think what we do is definitely get as close as possible, and then turn ethereal with good old Edge here. And maybe, just maybe, still have... Well, we got the Spark Refresher, but we didn't get the Spark Point back. Which is, you know, not too terribly bad. Although I do say what we should do here for the first thing we do here is make sure that uh, the stooge goes down. I think that's probably a good idea. 
And then what we can do after that is obviously drop Bowser on top of the other guy. Because I think that Bowser should be able to get rid of him by himself, for the most part. Just based on the fact that, well, let's be honest here, Bowser's pretty good at doing damage in quick succession. Without having to really worry about where he is, for the most part. Because he could do a dash, he could do a nice little uh, Bowzooka to that guy to blast him into next century. And then honestly, from there, we just set up for next turn for whatever enemies decide to spawn out of that little portal over there. And the thing is, is I feel like... Nope, it's Stooges. Okay, I was thinking that was going to be the Oozers. Well, it looks like they can definitely hit us if they try. But for the most part, it looks like we dodged both. Cool. Although there's another one spawning. <laughs> and thankfully he moved completely out of range, which is good. But they're staying behind cover, which is... Honestly, probably the better thing for them at this current moment. It looks like our Wild Claw is starting to prepare to get into position. But so let's be honest here, I don't think the Wild Claw is really the uh, thing that needs to be worrying right now, because uh, they have dashes now sets. Oh, we also got a Spark cooldown down. Oh, hello. I, I don't know why that looked like I could hit three enemies there for a second there, but honestly, it would be cool if I could. But uh, down goes both of those, and down goes that map. <laughs> Not bad. Pretty simple little uh, side quest, I'll definitely say that one. And honestly, 200 star bits is always good. Also another planet coin, because we need 12 of those for the secret zone here. So down goes album cover. Oh, and there's a mural back here. Cool. So that was definitely worth it. Because <laughs> now we get another store, or actually two stories of B. So let's see here, which one's first? Probably... Looks like none of them. I guess we could just read them at, at any point. But this one's got Tom Fawn in it. So I think this is probably better. Mm, a whole new generation of Fawns was exposed to be when she became a celebrity who's for the annual Galactovision Soul Contest. Looks like uh, Tom Fawn ended up losing based on him getting his tongue tied on that bottom right one. <laughs> mm, unfortunately, the Fawn Tom was her co-host. The two constantly tried to outshine each other, eventually ruining their voices. Looks like Tom Fawn was the only one that really did that based on him in the bottom right. But, uh, <laughs> well, let's see what's going on with this next one. I have no, no idea what's going on in that one. It looks like she's uh, taking up wrestling in that one. But I could be wrong. B saying the Beacon Beach Brawl is entrance music. Live for his gal galaxy wrestling title bout at Galactomania. Hmm. It was the first of many ill-advised comeback attempts, although she did develop one heck of a sunset pile driver. <laughs> That's pretty cool, and also pretty fitting with um, the fact that I've you know I've been talking about wrestling recently in some episodes, so it's actually kind of cool. Or just having wrestling references, like the hat that I wear sometimes. So that's actually pretty cool. Although this this hat I'm wearing right now is not one, but to be honest, it's nice to see references because the other hat that I wear with the uh, hawk moth on it is a wrestling hat. So that's actually pretty cool. But uh, with that being said, I think this is where we're going to be ending off today's episode. Since, let's be honest here, we have done quite a decent amount today. And... Let's be honest here, we definitely got a nice little look into the new world here. Terraflor is definitely seeming to shape up like it's going to be a pretty interesting adventure, just from what we've seen so far, from the Wiggler Express, to this uh, water volcano, to even what seems to be a, like a honeybee warden, which is pretty interesting, which reminds me of the honeybee galaxy from Super Mario Galaxy. So that's actually pretty cool. But with that being said, thank you all for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day, I'll see you all in the next one, and in the next one, we'll be continuing our adventure <laughs> in the good old world of Terraflora. So, with that being said, keep being spooky, peace out, and I'll see you all in the next one. Hey boys and girls, thank you all for watching today's episode, if you liked what you saw today, please leave a like and maybe even subscribe, and hit the bell notification down below. If you guys have any kind of suggestions for games, please put that in the comments down below as well. Thank you all for watching today's episode, and keep being spooky. Peace out, guys.